There's a big drama brewing involving uh, Moist Critical. He's been called out by a smaller creator named Dark Viper. He's a guy who's bitter. Pupils are super dilated, too. Why are his pupils so dilated? He's got something in his bloodstream, man. Sir Speedy, Speedy Viper here, who just did a line of meth. You're taking the L, man. It is unhinged. Very unhinged and very bitter. Very unhinged and very bitter. It's nothing, bro. It doesn't matter. You're an asshole and a dumbass, too. And your points are bad. And you're on meth. What are you going to do about it? You suck. Fuck you. Shut Every impression. Up, dude. Every given whining. To the Stop Therefore, whining, bro. Are... That, that space is just going to go to another high click through, high watch time creator. Which ain't you. Oh! You're so boring, bro. It doesn't matter. Just move on. Boring. Lame. Stop it. Where L. I said hi. This on so much Adderall. Oh my God. Can I skip this? I hate this part. Is so we'll pointless. Go to that. Or says, I have to skip this. Dude, I got to skip you. Is this what it's like from here on? Because this shit is. Off the rails, guys. I need something more juicy than this. Oh my god, bro. You are so annoying. Your content sucks, dude. You're mad. You don't get impressions, bro, because you explain things 20 times. I gotta skip you again. I just skipped like five minutes. He's still talking about impressions. Oh, content, content to bring themselves to mech. I can't keep watching these arguments about impressions. This is so stupid. He's raving. He's angry. He's bitter. Also, who cares? Ain't that weird? That the only You're so boring, dude. I'm gonna wrap this up. This guy's annoying me. Uh, let me just skip forward Dolls. again. He just seems bitter. He really does. And I'll tell you what else I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write a 15 page essay about why you're a poo poo head. What you gonna do about it, dude? I'm gonna start with why your fingernails so long. Poo poo head number one. Dude's got long fingernails. Cut your fingernails, bro. It's weird. Also, don't like seeing your armpit hair. Wear a shirt, okay? Cover yourself. Yeah, I just don't want to see your armpit hair all the time. <laughs> It just seems to be the kind of ramblings of a bitter dude who is just mad. I just don't care, bro. I've engaged heavily as, as honestly and, and, and uh, as partially as I possibly could in the first and second video. People actually begged me to watch Ethan Klein's response to my dispute with Charlie over React content, and I can honestly say after being on YouTube for 10 years, this is the worst response I've ever received. Throughout his response videos, Ethan refuses to argue for anything that he asserts, or to even give the reasoning behind much of what he says. Worse, he doesn't define or justify his usage of terms that are used very differently around the world, making it hard to understand what his positions even are. Taken at face value, he seems to believe that the first constitutional amendment in America gives Americans unrestricted global redistribution rights to everyone else's creative works, not just American creative works, but all creative works ever produced in any country throughout time. I know this can't actually be his position. I'm going to give Ethan some credit and suggest he is not as stupid as he comes across. But I'm immediately tempted to take this boon back, given how little he understood of what I said or wrote. For example, I clarified my position on fair use, which can be summarized as, who the fuck cares? Ethan, of course, didn't understand this, so took every reference I made to effectively anything to be commentary on the American legal system. Fair use, 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 fair use. What is fair use fair use here? Fair use, fair use, fair use. Why on earth would my standard for acceptable behavior be what people wrote down in 1976 in a country that I've never even been to. While I did take one paragraph to point out that the React content I was criticizing is not protected under American fair use law, I further went on to say that even if it was, I wouldn't care. The reason I think React content shouldn't exist has nothing to do with America's antiquated ideas of copyright. There are literally hundreds of countries with differing ideas as to what degree people should be given ownership of their own work or allowed usage of other people's. Why does Ethan think his country's laws should supersede all other laws and standards of morality? And why, if I had to pick one personally, would I pick the American legal system of all places to enshrine as the most important? The laws in any region are an ever-changing amorphous blob. It is the justification for the law, not the law itself, that holds weight in terms of advocating for particular behaviors over any other. The single reference I made to slavery was to outline the stupidity of arguing that anything that is legal is somehow justifiable. Even in the 1800s be like, what, you're complaining about slavery? Well, it's legal, shut up. Maybe you don't want to own slaves, but he does. That's his business, not yours. He doesn't have to do that. And you don't get to tell him what to do. 
because this is America. This line of argumentation that Ethan employs is stupid because you run into the issue of inadvertently defending every exploitative and harmful act in human history in every country, so long as it's still legal or it was legal at the time. It further suggests that no law should ever be changed because why would they ever need to be, as the law defines what is good and therefore it can never be wrong. Worse, your position on anything can be changed at the stroke of a pen, which is obviously idiotic. Ethan doesn't understand this, so every time I would bring up any harm brought forth by React content, he would say, yeah, but it's legal, bro. While he's certainly wrong about that, it's beside the point. Ethan argues as if the only reason we shouldn't murder children and eat them for lunch is because it's illegal to do so. You have no conception how painful this was to listen to, and I had to listen to it four fucking times. I actually paid someone else to go through it for me for the fifth time, and they complained it was unbearable. While the fair use stuff was bad, the second thing he kept repeating was far worse. Right to free speech. Free speech, and what a reaction video ultimately is, is free speech. We value free speech, and I just consider it free speech. Free speech. Again, we're talking about free speech. We're talking about free speech. Free speech. This is protected speech, my friend. This is free speech we're talking about. Fair use, right? We're talking about free speech. Freedom of speech. It's free speech. You don't need consent for speech. Free speech. Free speech. That's America. Free speech. Free speech. It's free speech. Because this is America. Free speech. That's not how free speech works. We're talking about free speech. It's speech, dude. It People doesn't from going matter, to YouTube. though. We're talking that about is the same free thing. speech. I'm not it's free speech, bro. Free speech. This is America. Speech. Free speech. I don't give a shit because it's free speech, baby. Guess what? Free speech. Free speech. It's free speech. Holy shit. Repeating freedom of speech 36 fucking times is not an argument for anything. He doesn't even define what freedom of speech means to him. He just repeated the phrase over and over and over and over and over again, as if this phrase doesn't have multiple meanings and wide disagreement in the public sphere as to what it should cover. The way he uses the phrase, again, seems to imply that the mere utterance of an opinion about something gives you unlimited global redistribution rights for whatever you've commented on. He believes free speech not only gives you the right to communicate your own opinions and expressions, but it also gives you free reign to control and redistribute other people's. It should be obvious to you that I can say that Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3 are great movies without showing you a single frame of any of them. I feel like I might be blowing Ethan's mind here by having expressed an opinion without showing you six hours of content. Speaking on anything does not require you to copy and or redistribute whatever you're talking about. Freedom of speech obviously existed before the digital age and the coming of the ability to easily copy and reproduce other people's works. America's first constitutional amendment does not seem to give you absolute rights over other people's creative works. If it did, copyright law would be unconstitutional and fair use law wouldn't need to exist. These are separate laws and concepts. I made sure to read again the article, Where's the Fair Use, which gives a comprehensive review of the history of fair use law and its application and precedent on YouTube, just in case I missed something. In its 40 pages, freedom of speech is not mentioned even once. 40 pages! Even freedom of speech as a general philosophical concept does not necessitate ownership of or the right to redistribute the labors of others. To put it another way, you can speak on whatever you want that has never been disputed. It is a question of what right you have to redistribute and profit from the labor of others without permission or payments. Freedom of speech is not the same thing as universal right to context for your words. To put it more bluntly, imagine a world where you spent 10 years and $10 million producing something, but then everyone could just copy and redistribute it for free as long as they had an opinion on it. Ethan seems to want to argue that people should not be rewarded for their efforts, and his mere utterance is sufficient for him to take ownership of whatever he speaks on. Again, I cannot believe for a second this is actually his position, but then why release such an impressively stupid video if that is the case? While what free speech is or what it should cover is not universally agreed upon, as a legal right, it generally just codifies into law the ability to communicate ideas and information without restriction from the government. The UN, for example, states, everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media regardless of frontiers. This does not necessitate or even really imply that you have the right to universal ownership of the context of your words, nor the right to achieve maximal understanding irrespective of any other factor. It relates to information and ideas. It's why you can't go into a museum and say, this picture looks pretty, and then take it off the wall and take it home. 
I have made the case that what reactors are doing, watching the entirety of another person's video with their audience, is exploitative and harmful, ultimately rewarding the lazy over the hard working, which is not only bad for the content creator ecosystem, but is harmful to society as a whole due to the bad incentive structure. These points Ethan never came close to understanding or responding to, which again made his response very difficult to listen to. Ethan however did assert at least twice that React content is always good. I showed that not to be true in great detail in the second video in this series, so I won't rehash it here. Most of you would likely say that people should have a right to a certain degree of control over the things they create. But you'd also likely say that people should have some ability to use another's creation to make something original. I believe both of these ideas are good for society, but where each of us would draw the line is going to differ. But rather than tackling this difficult issue, or giving some sort of a position, Ethan just repeats freedom of speech over and over and over again as if the unlimited redistribution of everyone else's work is a requirement to speak on anything. Ethan is the first person I've ever heard in my 10 year career reference fair use as simply freedom of speech. I would further refute the reasoning behind the position, but he never gives it and I've never heard it before. Ethan acts as if freedom of speech is the end rather than the means to the end and thus will not even contemplate a reality where something else could be just as, or more, important. Even the Supreme Court in America has given allowances for the government to restrict speech for fuck's sakes. Ethan's implication that React content of the sort that I described would be protected under fair use law is just dishonest. Imagine a scenario where Ethan and I have seen a man run and scream, I'm going to intentionally stab Frank in the face until he dies. And then we watch as he does that very thing. Well, I would say, oh my God, he just murdered that guy. Ethan would apparently say, I mean, murder is a legal definition. Neither of us here are lawyers, so. Ethan needs to remember that the existence of ambiguous things does not make all things equally ambiguous. Furthermore, we do not make decisions in life based on 100% certainty, merely what is most likely true given what we know. As the judge in his own trial pointed out, the range of what is called React content is very broad, not all of it being legal, but I was very specific in the form that I was speaking on and there is no ambiguity here. The Klein's video is arguably part of a large genre of YouTube videos commonly known as reaction videos. Videos within this genre vary widely in terms of purpose, structure, and the extent to which they rely on potentially copyrighted material. Some reaction videos, like the Klein's video, intersperse short segments of another's work with criticism and commentary, while others are more akin to a group viewing session without commentary. Accordingly, the court is not ruling here that all reaction videos constitute fair use which I think is a great distinction mm -hmm. because us who do it well and who respect fair use, we hate these shitty jink styles reaction videos. Also, who cares? Ain't that weird? They're the only it's so boring, dude. I'm gonna wrap this up. This guy's annoying me. Uh, let me just skip forward again. And I think everyone on YouTube also can tell the difference. There's the, the classic old school dumb reaction videos where they just sit there and watch it right. and don't say anything they just laugh with the video or whatever and then there is the other kind where people you know people put in commentary editing there is nothing either in precedent or a charitable reading of fair use guidelines that would defend react content of the form i describe reactors are not even giving a casual attempt at staying within fair use guidelines and fair use does not defend the market substitutes that they create there is also no doubt that the Klein's video is decidedly not a market substitute for Haas's video because the Klein video does not offer a substitute for the original. It does not and indeed cannot usurp a market that properly belongs to the copyright holder. And you may have noticed by watching any React videos done through a live stream that you've seen the entire original work and there is no reason to watch the original as you have already seen it. It is a perfect market substitute that targets the same market as the original. Originally here, I had a breakdown of the entirety of fair use and its guidelines, but it's a tad long, so I'll just put it in the description. But to summarize, when you've taken the entirety of another person's work, it is effectively impossible to pass fair use as you end up violating the other guidelines by creating a substitute for the original on the market. In other words, it doesn't matter what the reactor adds, that they leave nothing behind means no one has any reason to seek out the original. It then becomes impossible for reactors because they cannot defend the substantiality of what they've taken because they had no idea what was in the video prior to their watching it and using all its material. In most cases, when asked the question, why did you use that copyrighted material? The response will be, I don't know, I didn't know it would be there, I guess I used it because it was there. Ethan did this with his reaction to my video. He copied and redistributed the entire thing, but made comments such as, hey, move on, this isn't relevant, I don't care about this. 
He can't go to court and argue he had a legal right to use my material while he openly admits in the video that it was entirely irrelevant to his commentary and he had no need to include it. It was only out of laziness that he left it in, and this is the problem that all reactors have. The only thing that matters is that you used it for a reason. Without using actual clips, the commentary and critique here would lose the context and utility. Here the context and quality and importance of the videos of the clips used by the defendants was reasonable to accomplish the transformative purpose of critical commentary. This factor is therefore neutral. A great deal of the plaintiff's work was copied, but such copying was plainly necessary for the commentary and critique. Shut every impression, up, dude, every given to a reaction video, therefore, Stop whining, bro. You're so boring, bro. It doesn't matter. Just move on. Boring. Lame. Where I said high oh my god, can I skip this? I hate this part is so we'll pointless. Go to that I have to skip this. Dude, I gotta skip this. Is this what it's like from here on? Because this shit is off the rails, guys. I need something more juicy than this. Oh my god, bro. You are so annoying. Your content sucks, dude. You're mad. You don't get impressions, bro, because you explain things 20 times. I gotta skip you again. I just skipped like five minutes. He's still talking about impressions. I can't keep watching these arguments about impressions. This is so stupid. Also, who cares? Ain't that weird? But the only You're so boring, dude. I'm gonna wrap this up. This guy's annoying me. Uh, let me just skip forward again. Dolls. Because at the end of the day, we as creators want to be on the right side of fair use here. Reactors are not using the bare minimum of what is necessary. They are taking everything irrespective of value just because it happens to be there. Fair use does not remove copyright, it is still copyrighted material, and stealing copyrighted material out of ignorance for its existence isn't a legal argument. No legal body has affirmed first-time reactions as socially valuable in of themselves, and thus, for the purpose of showing others my first-time reaction, isn't an argument for the use of copyrighted material. If fair use law did defend this form of reaction content, you could freely pirate movies by adding a small note that says, I think this is good. Netflix could avoid billions in licensing fees by having someone at the end give some commentary that could be easily skipped over. This sort of content is not what fair use was created to defend, and if it did, it would render copyright toothless. Uh, he says, he continues that, keep in mind that reactors are not reviewers, analysts, documentarians, expert critics, or even video uh, uh, essayists. This is a terrible argument by Dark Viper. He's using this to say, hey, who are they to uh, react to content? They have no qualifications. Their credentials has no bearing at all on um, their right to free speech. Uh, it, has, it doesn't matter if they're qualified you know it's like you don't need qualifications to have an opinion dude that's not how free speech works that is not the point of that sentence the point was to draw distinctions between content creators and people who watch youtube videos for a living this is made painfully obvious when the quote is taken in context it is drawing a distinction between types of content creators, not arguing that reactors lack qualifications. This should be especially obvious given that most of these things aren't qualifications. This part was added almost last because people were suggesting that I was not being specific enough in the form of content that I was critiquing. Look, this man had, his pupils were more dilated than the margin, they were wider than the margins on his 14 page essay, okay? Lastly, Ethan made half a dozen comments about my pupils. This was certainly a first for me. While I have been told a handful of times that I have beautiful eyes, I've never seen a person this fixated on my pupils before. Hearing secondhand about his claims of my rampant drug use, I wrote a tweet. This tweet was not about my pupils, but about his claims that I took drugs. My response was, why would I do illegal drugs when I have an autoimmune disease? That would be a difficult thing to bring up with my doctor, and I have enough problems as is. Yo doc, how is cocaine gonna mix with my medication? It should be obvious reading the tweet that I was not saying that my thyroid issue was the cause of my pupil dilation, merely one of the dozen reasons I don't do any drugs that aren't prescribed to me. It should further be obvious to people that the reason why my pupils were dilated was because I was concentrating in a dark room while being very angry. Adrenaline being the chief thing in your system that makes your pupils go wide. I was honestly surprised to learn that Ethan and most people don't know this about human biology, but hey, I'm not a biologist, so maybe it doesn't happen the same way for everyone. If you look back far enough, you might notice that my pupils were equally dilated in my old rant at the quartering for the same reason. You disingenuous, dense motherfucker. Obviously you have to know something about something or you couldn't tie your shoes. Bottom line, Ethan's video reacting to my video shows perfectly why React content is awful. 
Had he watched my video beforehand, he either would have concluded he didn't have enough to say to justify a video, or his video would have only been one-tenth the length, as he would have only included the parts of my work that mattered to what he wanted to say. He skipped over important sections, asked questions that were later addressed in the video, incessantly repeated himself, and misunderstood things that if he had taken the time, he likely would have come to grasp. Ethan's laziness caused him to produce something that not only misinformed his audience, but highlighted all his worst traits as a person. I will say, however, I expected to watch his video and conclude that Ethan is as bad a person as his horrible reputation suggests. I found this not to be so. Ethan is not a bad person, he is just a fool. If you want to learn about the actual harm of reaction content, check out the second video in this series which is linked down below. It looks at the topic from every angle using some relevant data, rather than what I did here, which was just respond to whatever was brought up by Ethan.